All right. Good Wednesday afternoon. It's Matt here with uh, Nick Marinowski. It's Winning Wednesday. Um, today's a little bit different because I'm not at home, so it's uh, the view. So good to see different. that. <laughs> yeah. No. No. It's nice. It, you know, you got you know business in the back, and you know you got a good uh, background. Now, do you uh, do you put the TV on for show, or are you watching it during the day? Because I like the background that you have with like the stock market, breaking news. I like. That. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I tend to keep uh, CNBC on in the background, just on low uh, yeah. volume. And then I have two screens. One screen has this, you know, it looks like, you know, uh, a different language with all the different, you know, charts and all this yeah. stuff that we follow for mortgages and, you know, and then, you know, emails and all the other stuff on the other side. So, yeah, I like to hear it in the background because it, it makes me feel like uh, I'm around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it looks good too. It's um, very, very professional. I like it. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll keep that noted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, it's a good little touch. Yeah. Thanks. Well, so, Nick, I wanted to, you know, obviously we we chat every Wednesday, and it's really a lot of good information each week. You know, before we got on the call today, I, I think you know we were just talking about just that overall sentiment of you know the the wind being at the sail now, kind of. The momentum is is going in a positive direction, whereas, you know, uh, last month, a couple months ago, it was very just kind of standing still. So I think, you yeah. know, this would be a good a good way to kind of start the conversation, just in terms of what you're seeing, um, and 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 what that means for for your industry. Yeah. Now, so I, I guess today, you know, in terms of uh, winning Wednesday, I think it's a good day to talk about, you know all of the good news and some of the sentiment that has made our business, you know, uh, really have a lot of momentum going into the rest of this, uh, you know, the second half of this year um, with, like we said, the wind at our back, um, you know, with low interest rates. Um, I just read about the, the national home buyer sentiment that increased from, from a low uh, in April when, when people were, were stuck home. So a lot of people think it's a good time to buy more than half of the country does. Um, and then there was an increase in, in the people that thought it was a good time to sell. Um, so, so that's a, that's a big deal. Um, and then we're seeing all of that, all of this data makes sense because we're, we're starting to see that one of the, 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 the data points that I picked up from our business, um, uh, because we're right there in the, in the middle of market. Um, so in last year, our average loan amount for, for purchase applications was 332,000. Mm -hmm. This year, it's 350000 which represents an increase of 5%, which seems logical because if home prices, you know, increased in value, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a positive step. But yeah. the biggest difference is, is that with the interest rate, even though people are borrowing more, that payment ends up being about $70 less than it was for last year on that average loan amount. So with the, the interest rates of that time. So it's basically like this year people are borrowing more and still paying less, which was like a nice surprising fact that I think is important for everybody, you know, to realize um, in this market is that even if home values have gone up, the cost of home ownership has gone down, yeah. um, you know, on average. And then on top of that, again, you know, we've seen an increase in purchase applications of 9% from where we were, you know, last year, which I think, you know, goes, you know, hand in hand with what you're saying on yeah. um uh you know on the increase in showings you, yeah. you you share that fact with us that uh maybe it wasn't uh we weren't live yet but you know that we have that you guys have higher amount of showings that you did the same time last year which is really good it's really exciting it's nice to see you know people are are excited and 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 we haven't you know skipped a beat like it doesn't feel like yeah. uh you know a, a pandemic with the way that you know people have been able to adjust you know and as long as they're working and and you know uh and and, and doing their thing I, I think that this time home has really made people want to, to to buy a home and so the people like we've been saying the people that haven't you know that are currently rented and they've been stuck in their house for, for three months you know they're like yeah. wow i need to buy something or maybe the house is just not the right size anymore for a growing family. Like there's things that, you know, people realize that home, home really is important. Um, especially if you end up, if, 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 if this, if the, if this situation changes for people in the future where remote office working continues, I mean, I think I just, I also read another, um, 
important stat that roughly 67% of office workers would like to work remote uh, yeah. as of right now. So anybody, you know, uh, thinking that people are going to just jump back to the office, I mean, Gatorade doesn't have a, 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 a an immediate plan to, you know, make people go back to the office besides like a, a, a skeleton, you know, crew that's actually, you know, that has to be there. But we've, you know, done great by, you know, doing this way. And I think it's also helped us because we're then able to, from, from my perspective and the things that I've been working on is we've been able to hire some more remote employees yeah. and pick up, you know, really great talented people, which has been, you know, part of our, 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 our thing as of this year, recruiting, you know, not only, you know, MLOs, you know, across the country, but also operations people that can kind of help us because we realize, you know, all of this adjustment, we don't have to, to be there. And so, you know, we're ready to, to, to serve, I mean, to, to, to get, you know, these loans done, we're noticing, you know, rates that are still sub 3%, which is, you know, lowest on record. So if, if you can't, um, you know, find that this is a good time, you know, to buy, there might not be a lot more, you know, that are better than this. And, and I, and I just love that the sentiment is, is, is going up. Well, and, and, and it is a huge difference. I mean, what you just said is it'll be interesting to see, and, and we might've talked about this a little bit last week, but the direction in which employers go, like I know, for example, my brother-in-law works out um, at Facebook in uh, California, and they basically already said that they can work from home for the remainder of the year. Um, if the work environment changes or just the perception of, not even the perception, the reality of how many days somebody needs to go into the office, in our world, if you worked in New York City or if you were commuting super far, the commute may not be as much of a variable anymore. Because if you're working remotely a couple days a week and you're commuting a couple days a week, if you have a really nice property or a really nice place that you want to live, you're probably going to bite the bullet and say, you know what, I can drive an hour both ways two days a week. You know, yeah. it's a huge difference yeah. between five days a week. So. I think it'll be interesting, you know, because, you know, similar to what you were just saying with some of the stats in the mortgage industry, um, on our sales rally yesterday, we were pulling up some stats where uh, from May 2018 to today, so essentially two years later, the median sale price is not that different. Like the, the for sale price, it's, it's actually pretty consistent. So it's interesting to see what sector of the market is actually selling you know, in which sector mm -hmm. isn't selling. And I think that's something that you kind of touched on a little bit, a little bit too. And, and, and what you were talking about with your stats. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I see it as allowing people more leeway. So if you were selling a house in a certain town, you know, you might have a certain buyer pool because people needed to be within a, a certain distance from, from work. This might open things up to, to areas and homes and neighborhoods of, you know, people that are now only commuting twice a week. And so they're, you know, they don't have to uh, go as far, um, you know, that that often. And so you might have more, you know, I think it'll be a nice reallocation of, of demand. Uh, and hopefully then supply comes back because people can get, you know, more for their homes because now they realize even if they're a little further from, you know, mass transit or this or that, like people don't have to worry about it as much as they used to. Well, and now's the time that if, you know, and, and I think we've been coaching our agents. I mean, now's the time to really go after the seller listings. Because, you know, if you have an influx of buyers, if you had a multiple offer situation and you didn't win out, reach out to the other neighbors in those areas and just say, you know, hey, I had two other, you know, I had, I had a, a buyer that submitted an offer that wasn't accepted. However, you know, they submitted over asking or asking price and, and just to see because right now the sellers are really what, what we need to come back into the market. The buyers are there. I mean, in, in, in yeah. Yeah, we've been say, we've been saying that you and I have been saying that for for since we started winning Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the sellers, if we can get them on board, that's the that's the only missing ingredient. That's that's the that's the 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 thing that'll you know propel our 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 market and 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 match up this you know buyer demand and supply. Um, it, it's easy, you know. People have been home. They see that you know where rates are. They've been able to consume you know more of that news. They know that this is this is getting good uh, for both buying and for selling. And, you know, what I, what we've been doing pretty well um, is, you know, just people that you wouldn't, you know, uh, leads that are between 12 and 24 months old, like clients that, you know, maybe ask like, uh, you know, what's going on, 
or wanted to, to purchase a, a home at that time, this is the time to dig into to your entire database because you don't know what's changed for people. You don't really, I mean, this is, if this doesn't change something, this is a perfect time to reconnect with, yeah. with uh, leads or buyers or potential back burner type, you know, situations. Uh, and then, like you said, even if you had over asking and then, you know, uh, uh, post it on Facebook, say, look, we, we've been selling these homes over asking this and that. There's a lot to do and a lot to, um, that can be done to get these, you know, sellers on board. And, and I'm starting to see it. Like you see that home buyer sentiment for, for, for sellers too, thinking that it's a, it's a pretty good time to buy because of all these nice factors from the lending end and from the buyer end. you know, from the, you know, the fact that demand is good and, and the cost of financing is low. Absolutely. So, so Nick, I wanted to shift gears real quick. Um, yeah. As of, I think it was Sunday or Monday, I don't know, the days are all kind of blending together, but essentially agents can now um, do open houses again. Obviously, very, you know, guidelines are very strict, you know, in terms of how they have to operate and what needs to happen with, with the open houses. Um, now, I know, I believe, prior to COVID, you would support agents with, you know, marketing materials like flyers and stuff like that for um, open houses. Can you just refresh, like, what what services you offer in, in, in those realms? And, you know, because obviously, do I think there's going to be a ton of open houses this weekend? No, I don't. But I think gradually, yeah. as, as we've been saying, the momentum is shifting back in the other direction. Um, yeah. You know, what, talk to us about what, what you can provide and support with our agents in that, in that area. Yeah, so what we've done is uh, we have actually, I have three different resources for, um, for, for co-marketing and flyers and things like that. One of them is, is the big name on the block, which is List Reports. Um, that's a, a beautiful kind of presentation of flyers. Uh, but we have a second um, uh, software program that allows us to do uh, flyers with actual financing uh, information on them, because I think it's important now that's the only drawback of list reports is if they have beautiful presentations, they, you know, it, it's all automated, but they don't have the financing info, uh, which I think it's important because of how, where rates are just to show clients how cheap they could actually purchase the home at yeah. 5%, 10%, 20, 20, you know, uh, uh, different options. So I, I think that that's a, uh, a big move there. Um, we have a lot of um, co-marketing flyers when if people want to share, um, info, not just about specific, um, you know, open houses, but also if they just want to share news um, and highlights, we can, you know, kind of co-brand some stuff like that. But for open houses, you know, I think it's uh, slow and steady. Uh, we have those tools and resources for, for what they need. Um, I think the last open house that I was at was probably around March. Mm -hmm. I actually showed up and that was with uh, Sam Valentine with, yeah. uh, with Rohani. Um, that was uh, great because I think it was a good weather day and then suddenly everything, you know, kind of stopped. But I can see them working, you know, fine uh, for whatever people need. Um, and Stephanie, too, I had gone to one. Uh, but, you know, um, it's still just one tool in the, in, in, in the belt and in, in being able to sell, you know, uh, homes. Uh, but I think it's an important one, right? Uh, you, you can do those from time to time, uh, be socially distant, you know, and as long as you modify the, the way that you do them, you know, we're here to sort of support that, you know, and, and, and try to get as many either new buyers from that or obviously get some attention for, for any listings. But, um, you know, too, it's, it's social media has, has, yeah. has allowed, you know, has taken some of that burden of what used to be an open house and, and made it a lot easier to open house to, to 10,000 people instead of the, the 30 or 40 that, um, that have come through. So, you know, with, with all of those, you know, changes, I, I think that, uh, I think that we'll be fine. And I think that there is room now for people to, to, you know, look around at these open houses as long yeah. as they're staying safe. Well, great. Well, thank you for that. Um, is there anything else, you know, before we sign off today, is there anything else that we didn't cover today that you wanted to make sure we covered? Yeah, it's just, um, you know, aside from the, the, the good sentiment, sentiment and stats, um, just if anyone is looking to, to, to buy a home or to refer uh, me or any one of my teams, so there's, there's me, there's Glenn Kersinger, and then there's uh, Ileana Mejia. Uh, any one of us, you know, can help with, uh, you know, the home buyers. You know, Ileana, as you know, has, has some real estate experience too, too to be able to, um, 
look up some info. Um, but with that, you know, we want to take the time for anyone that has um, maybe looked into buying a home before to yeah. have them um, use our affordability calculators on our website without necessarily even having to pull credit, you know, if they're still in the early stages, just to see how much they can afford and, and how much different the, the rates make it for them, you know, at this point. So, you know, we kind of pool everybody in a certain stage, like, hey, if it's too early for you, if you know what you want you need, and you want it tomorrow, which I get that a lot, like people are like, I need to be approved today, you know, and you're like, okay, but yeah. you know, I need this, this and this. Um, and then there's people that are just, you know, start to, to bruise. And so we have a different pathway for those um, and, and, and are readily available to, to support that and then bring them back to the, the, the real estate agent when they're ready. Right. And so it's like, Hey, this person is looking, they're not going to you know buy, but we got them into the pre-approval process. And so in the next uh, 30 to 60 days or tomorrow, whichever it ends up being, you know, we're, we're conscious of that, um, and ready to support anyone that, uh, that, you know, that comes to get a rate and, 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 and refers us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nick, for all that information. Definitely uh, feel free to reach out to Nick, Glenn, Ileana, um, anyone on the team. And, um, you know, as always, it's a pleasure speaking with you. And uh, we'll, we'll do some more Winning Wednesday next Wednesday. Sounds good. Thanks bye. for having me. Bye, Nick. Bye. bye.